Diet Lemonade. Welcome back to another episode of Gag Score Plays Phoenix Wright. My name is Bobby. I'm Kev Andre. And, uh... We... Something, something is, by the way, the correct name of this game. Yeah. Of this second entry in the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney when, Justice when we for All series. we were loading the game up, I even looked at the load screen to specifically try and remember what the extra title of this game was, and I don't have it. Yeah. It's called Phoenix Wright Gets a Little Something Something. Yeah. Uh, Blumpkin. Except he doesn't at all. He is just. A, a he's gotten version. many Blumpkins by now. I don't think he's actually gotten a Blumpkin. Well, Gumshoe did. Uh, oh yeah, Gumshoe definitely. That man just you know land Blumpkins all the way around town. Just number one pipe layer in Japan, man. Of course. Uh, one thing we have a nice little box fan underneath the desk now. Yeah. Because moving into this corner and this part of the house made it really hot, especially underneath the desk with my computer and all that stuff and the and the. Ceiling fan doesn't quite get under the desk, so I've been burning um, under the desk. So I put the box fan there, and I'm going to have it uh, set up with the robot later, but not right now because I was not going to be bothered by doing it before recording. Right. Um, so if there's a little more excess uh, background noise, you know, forgive me. I When I was testing it, I didn't really hear too much of a difference. Yeah, we're hoping that once we actually record the episode, it'll all get uh, canceled out. If we were professional, we'd be turning off the ceiling fan and AC and all that stuff anyway. Uh, we are not. Yeah, it's fucking California. It's I'm not Arlo. I'm not going to turn off the fucking air conditioner to record. Yeah, and the insulation in this place is awful. So if it if the sun shines on us, it just gets hot. Yeah. And it won't stay cool for long once we turn all that stuff off. Exactly. So, so fuck that noise. So we're not doing that. Sorry, Earth. Global warming it is. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let us know if you can hear the fan garrison. And we would let you know that we don't care. Yeah. What if we made, like, socks, but, like, in between, like, the okay, so it's like a two-layer sock, right? Right? Okay. I guess most socks are kind of like that. No, not really. It's no. just, like, the one fabric. But you got a, a dual-layer thing, and in between it, you've got, like, a Freon in there, so it's, like, cooling socks. Do you think Freon is just a magical thing that cools everything it touches? Yes. Okay. I think I have an HVAC book that I can give you that it'll explain how all that stuff works. It's not magic. It what if you what if you cut Icy Hot in half and you just get the icy part? I've had a bad experience with Icy Hot. I'm not going near that shit again. Right. The icy is the good part. It's the hot that sucks. See, if you put it on certain parts, there is no icy part. It's just hot. Icy. It is burning for a... No, there is no icy. It's just hot. <laughs> burning for a long time. See, I, you know, I'm assuming that the icy part is Freon. So um, if you do that and then you, you add cesium to it to make it last forever... Um, what? You combine the Freon with the cesium atoms. What makes you think cesium lasts forever? Because cesium is time. No, that's it's not what how that Kronos works. invented. No. <laughs> so time plus cold no. equals good cold sock. No. Which is better than pink sock. The fuck is a pink sock? Is it just a pink sock? Google or is, it. Or is that some Google shit? It's some Google shit. I figured. I haven't seen that one yet. Hold uh, on. This episode's uh, off to a rough It's start. also known as a prolapse. Oh, I know what that is. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, <laughs> people call it pink sock. Okay. I had one of my uh, little baby bunnies. <laughs> oh, uh, no. He, he was born as the grunt of the litter, and he was very young. He would occasionally have that happen to him when he was trying to poop. Oh, that sucks. Because he was too bitty. And we had to get him a whole bunch of special medication for that. He once was a pro, but that lapsed. Gross. Lamau. Anyways. Anyway, five minutes in. Let's go. Let's be <laughs> professional now. Uh, what, what happened last time? Uh, let's see. Uh, Gumshoe <laughs> tried to give Pearl a gun. Nice. Um, <laughs> and Phoenix was like, a metal gumshoe. And he's like, okay, I'll stop. Um, and then he wouldn't tell us anything. Her name's Pearl, not Ryden. Don't give a kid a gun. Exactly. You can give Ryden a gun, though. Um, as Pearl a kid. was just like, oh, I've never left Curane Village before. So then she bailed on you. And then we got through to Eeny Meeny and found out that her sister was the nurse who died in the car crash and supposedly was responsible for the deaths of the people at uh, McLovin's uh practice right that's right 
And there's this whole, you have to unlock their heart thing to see the lies. Yeah, we've got the, the half 69 uh, gem now. Which is super weird. Okay, and then... And Pearl turns on the LED to make it work. Now where do we go? Maybe back to the detention center? Back to the law offices. The law offices, where nobody is. Yeah, because sometimes you can see stuff. You, half the time when you show up there and tell you what to do next, I guess we didn't get that. We don't have, a, we don't have a, a friend right now, so they That's won't... fucking rude. What if you're playing this for the channel, and you have to, you know, only do like an episode a week, and you're playing with a dumb fuck like me? Okay, we can't remember shit. Yeah, I'm in Come 999 on. mode right now. <laughs> I've been editing the shit out of the ending of that one, because we recorded all of the rest of it last weekend. And so I... Uh, I yes. uh yeah, I've been editing it, and it's been glorious. Good time. So I, like, kind of forgot about Phoenix stuff, so I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Metal shit. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I'm almost out of time. Can I really do anything? Can I really save her? Kept uh, you waiting, huh? Nice. Huh? <laughs> 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 Must be Maya. Uh... I, I have no idea. Just, uh, yeah, okay. Right? If he it, thinks it, it's Maya, it's probably a feminine voice. It's right? probably Mia. Oh, it could be. Right? She's probably channeling into Maya. In which case, that's me. Yeah. It's been a long time, hasn't it, Phoenix? That voice. Good call, sir. Fucking called it. Nice. How does she not <laughs> fall out of that thing? Uh, gaffer tape. Oh, I don't think that works on human skin very well. But, I mean, I guess she's not human anymore. I'm sure there's some sort of, like, booby anti-jiggle tape. You know what? I think there is. She puts Velcro on her nipples so that it just sticks to the uh, the cloth. Just Velcro on their nipples? Yeah. Okay. Remember our neighbor down the street, Mr. Velcro? John Velcro? He made it big, and now I want to follow in his footsteps. What the fuck? That's from some dumb shit thing that you found on the internet, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, it is. You know, back in, like, Ot 3. Oh, yeah? Back in Homestar Runner days? Uh, yeah, slightly. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. I saw that on FlashPlayer.com. Yeah. Just Newgrounds. That's an old-ass statement. Ark and Kerrigan. Fucking boomer. You go to, you go to FlashPlayer.com right now, it redirects you to IGN, which is very depressing. Ow! Mm-hmm. Ooh! That one hit me right in my childhood. Yeah. Okay, that... that hurts. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Mia! We're not gonna do anything this episode. <laughs> Even without me being here, it looks like you've learned to stand on your own. My name is Lotus. Oh. Lotus, you, you know saucy what? bitch. It actually kind of works. <laughs> <laughs> Mia. She's Maya's older sister. And my mentor. And that bitch is dead. <laughs> she was a top-notch defense lawyer, but a certain case forced her into retirement. Uh, okay. But, uh, whenever I'm in trouble, she comes to help, just like this. Maxwell Silverhand came down upon her head. Her spirit comes back from the other world and borrows Maya's body for a bit. Phoenix. You can't make that kind of face in front of your client. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets, and especially when it's bad. You don't know many lawyers, do you, lady? Bitch, I was one. <laughs> Mia! You can't smile at the end if you've been smiling the whole way there. That's just... no, that's wrong. In any case, the face you're making now is no face to show a client, Phoenix. But but So, tell me all about it. I'm going to guess that my sister is a lot of trouble again. Yeah, she, she's in a lot of trouble again. Yeah, she's straight up knifed a dude. And then he was shot. That's my theory. I told her everything about what had happened in the last two days. Mia closed her eyes, deep in thought, while she listened. Only for a moment, and the moment's gone. <laughs> I see. Mia, what am I supposed to do? It's pretty clear what a good lawyer does in this situation. Fucking bails. <laughs> Acquit. Yes. <laughs> Emphasis on quit. <laughs> and that is... Tell me, please. Believe in your convictions. And fight for the complete acquittal of your client. <laughs> ah, acquit. Yes. Yes. But she also said conviction. So, 
I'm getting mixed signals here, Mia. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we we need to do the Chewbacca defense, is what she's saying. Yes. Chewbacca it up. You can do that. We can totally Chewbacca. You think Maya's not guilty? How can you be so sure? I know she is, and I'll give you a hint as to why. Yes. Mediums can't have dreams. They can't. That fucking sucks. From what you told me, it sounds like Maya was having a dream while channeling. Then again, last night I had a dream. Fuck, I did not like this dream. I, I dreamt that I was in, like, a futuristic city. Like, you had to, like, enter... Like, okay. So you had to enter through these, like, outer walls to get into this futuristic city, and you, got, you could fly around in these little boat things. And then I dreamt that I lost all my shit and forgot where I kept it all. So, like, I barged into a funeral for somebody looking for my glasses because I had no idea where the fuck I left them. And then, like, my pants were, like, somewhere, like, in, like, a sports arena. And I'm just, like, trying... I'm, I got this, like, uh, flying taxi guy. I mean, I haven't even seen Fifth Element since I was a kid, so I don't know where this came from. Um, yeah, it sounds a lot like Fifth Element. I know. It's weird. Um, so I'm just, like, going all over the place trying to find the shit that I lost. Like, I didn't even think about it being fifth element until just now, but it was really weird, and then I woke up, and I couldn't find my glasses in real life, and I was like, oh my god, what the fuck, and it turns out I left them in the bathroom rather than my desk, so I was like, Rrr! so, it's weird, so I envy Maya in this case. Yes. I fear forgetfulness. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't remember what my last dream was. Oh, so you're even worse off than I am. I suppose. Anyways, yeah, she said she dreamt that she had died and had been buried in the ground. But that is impossible. You've heard it from her, I'm sure. When a medium channels, her own spirit disappears. Which means that it's impossible for her to dream during that time. Uh, then, what does this mean? Nothing that you can prove in a court of law, Phoenix. Yeah, nothing at all. I think it's safe to bet that Maya was set up. A setup. It's up to you to blow the lid on this case tomorrow and show how she was set up. It's a good thing I'm so good at blowing. I agree. That's what Edward told me. Yeah, got lots of practice with Edward. <laughs> how am I supposed to prove her innocence when I have nothing to go on? If you're looking for a clue, it's already in your hands. I downloaded the app to play the game a long time ago. It, it is? How did you know I was playing pocket pool underneath this table? No, it was Clue, you fucking bastard. I'm talking about my dick. Oh! Pocket pool, you know. I've never heard that, but I like it. Oh, you've never heard that? You're going to shoot that cue ball? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, slap your dick around a bit while it's in your pocket. A little, little bit of pregame action so that when you whip it out for the girl, it's already, like, photo shoot ready. <laughs> and then she chocks it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, how it goes. You know, like how all the uh, the professional players do. They always chalk up the cue and have no idea why. Uh, oh, it's to provide a grip on the ball. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I understand that. I'm just saying that most people who are, like, playing pool for, like, the one time, like, every five years that they do it, yeah. they're always just, like, chalking up the thing, and they're just like, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I am. And so that way it doesn't slip. Yeah, it's not going to slip anyway. But I mean, it's going to. Just as it sounds, Phoenix, you already hold the key. Especially if you're trying to put a little bit of English on it. Most people can't do that. It just slips right off. Yeah. Because you're using house cues that have worn down. There's no soft tip, and it's just like trying to bang two rocks together. It doesn't work out well. Yeah, with your beans on toast. Yeah. A nice English breakfast. Yeah. Earl Grey. <laughs> really? You have some Earl Grey in there. Of course. <laughs> Come on, show me the key to this case. The key, huh? All right, I'll show it to her. The key I hold. It's the odd man hypothesis, Phoenix. Is is it my attorney's badge? No, it's the key that Pearl gave you. Uh, come on. I like the idea of it being my attorney's badge better. <laughs> okay, you can show it, it to her. It being a literal key is ruder. We actually probably should go to present. <laughs> Mia. Uh, wow. This badge brings back a lot of memories, doesn't it? I would love to stand with you at the defense's bench one more time. Mia. Hey, an actual something besides, I don't know what that is, pal. <laughs> don't hey, shut the fuck up, pilgrim. <laughs> Mia, have you seen this key before? Ah, the key. It's literally the key to understanding everything that's happening in this case. 
this key. Phoenix, listen. Right now, that key is sitting in your hand. However, it shouldn't be. It contradicts the facts. What does she mean? I'm certain this key will be the piece of evidence that makes your case tomorrow. You already know everything you need to know. You know what the key to this case is. That is enough. It's Buffy's sister Dawn. <laughs> but, but, how can I win tomorrow without knowing who the real murderer is? Who? Who could have? Ellipsis, Phoenix. It was a two for one. <laughs> I didn't know it at the time. But this day was going to end with a turn for the surprising. Oh shit. Oh my. Oh, what is this? She got Trace Amigos? Mia! What? What's wrong? That's right. Only I can see the Cyclops. Is it Psych or Psyche? I, I'm going... Uh, I, don't I think know. it must be Psyche because it's got the E at the end, right? No. But we could say Psyche. I mean, it, it, is, it, like, it is like a Psyche block, though, right? Could be. Or a Psyche block. So that way it sounds like Cyclops. Or like Bike Lock. Yeah. Tell us in the comments, is it Psyche Lock or Psyche Lock? Yeah, I'm sure somewhere out there someone's actually said it for real and knows the correct way Like if we it. watched the anime, then maybe we would get that. Doubt it. I, I will watch the anime once I'm certain I'm not going to have spoilers anymore. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't want shit for these games spoiled for <laughs> me. Anyways, which means Mia must know something about the real murderer. But for this to be something that she would hide under lock and key, even from me. Or from even me. What in the world is going on? What in the world is going on with me? This Carmen San Diego bitch. Oh, hey, autosave. Yeah, sure, why not? Hot diggity daffodil. <laughs> okay, so Mia voice. Just. What? <laughs> Prosecutor Von Karma? Yeah, what was that? Prostitutor Von Karma? Prostitute? Yes. Yeah, that better? Yes. Uh, okay. I agree. Uh, you mean. No, I heard it's his successor this time. Successor? Um. Manfred Von Karma was a really sinister man. He pulled all sorts of nasty tricks. Also, he could win. Rude. He was a man obsessed with the word perfection. Yeah. <laughs> he had a perfect record for 40 long years. Dude, I absolutely forgot how to do his voice. <laughs> Who knows what sort of dirty tricks he used to get each of those guilty verdicts. And now, his successor. I wonder what kind of person they will turn out to be. It's no good. Mystic Maya! Say, oh. oh, excuse me. <laughs> Pearly! I assumed. <laughs> you showed up! Thanks for coming all this way. I was really worried about you. Hey, where's your mother? Didn't you two come together? Mother is watching over the trainees. She said they have to training for two days straight with no breaks. Huh? Then... then... You came all by yourself? Yep. I snuck out of the manor and followed a map. I like how she rolls up her sleeves and is all tough. Yeah, she's gonna punch Maya in the face. Yeah. Rude. <laughs> Don't tell me you walked all the way here. Motherfucker, I got winded walking to Best Buy. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> of course not. I ran. I ran so far away. That's... I can't... Oh my. If it takes two hours by train... Oh man... There's no way she would have made it. Like, straight up. No. You know, I've met some kids who can run forever without ever getting tired. That's great, but if it takes two hours by train, assume the train is going 60 miles per hour, which is safe to say. It's possible the train also has other stops on the way, which would slow it down. Maybe, but it's also probable the train is going faster. I'm saying 60 as what it would be as averaging out for the trip. She also has medium powers. 
So maybe she turned on her yeah. own LED and yeah, ran really she fast. She may have medium powers, but she's still a small. She's the roadrunner. So, no. <laughs> she was running away from a coyote the entire time. Yeah, so she's not running 120 miles in a day. She might. No. No. That's not how that do. Or she hitchhiked and she's just lying. That's true. You know, she found a trucker and, uh... Yeah. Said, Hi, I'm cute. Take me to the court. It'd be weird if she's like, here's your blunts. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from that village? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fair. Anyways, Pearly, what about the train? Huh? What's a train? I give up. It's time, isn't it? Um, I'm really scared. What if Von Karma tries to do something to me? At least I know Mr. Edgeworth would be nicer to me than Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth? Who's that? Um, he's Nick's rival. Well, he's also a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember him as though I'd seen him only yesterday. Every trial was a scorchingly fierce battle until the very end. <laughs> it was always back and forth with them, but when you're rivals for life... Maya! Please don't mention that name ever again. Uh-huh. But why, Nick? I'm... I'm sorry, Maya. I forgot you don't know. He... He's... He's gone. And he's not coming back. What? <laughs> wait, wait a second. What's that supposed to mean? Court will commence shortly. Please proceed into the courtroom. Pilgrim. <laughs> Let's go. Now is not the time to talk about that, anyway. I moonlight as a bailiff, pal. N Nick. <laughs> <laughs> June 21st, 10 a.m. Is this going to be our first look at uh, Mrs. Von Miss Von Korma? I would assume so. <laughs> oh, that's saucy bitch. I'm going to enjoy this. Court is now in session for the trial of Maya Faye. Again. <laughs> All the prostitution and the defense prepared. <laughs> I liked the again. Because <laughs> it's so true. Ellipses. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what is with this kid? Ellipsis. Ahem. <clears throat> Mr. Rat, are you prepared? Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Yes, your honor. Why does he always seem mad at me? Mr. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> you must be a little shocked because I'm a woman, correct? Hold on. So she's the famed successor to Prostitutor Von Karma. I am Franziska von Karma, the prodigy. I... see. I gave up a promising career in Germany and came to this country for one sole reason. Revenge. Oh, I thought it was because you liked our... schnitzel better. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Nobody would say that, ever. Yes, they would. Compared to German schnitzel? Yeah, probably not. All the time. I, I... 100%. I'm sure Japan has better schnitzel than Germany. But this is L.A., as we discussed previously. Is it L.A.? Yes. Oh. Well, then, no. It's and fine. also, I'm sure that Japan does not have better schnitzel than Germany. Sure it does. Oh. L.A. doesn't. <laughs> L.A. doesn't, though. There's nothing good in L.A. That's true. Revenge? Is this about her father, Manfred von Karma? Um, if it's something of a personal nature, I'm sure you can... Ah! <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> I like her a lot. If you interrupt again, my whip will do the speaking for me. <laughs> Please speak with your mouth like a normal person. I beg of you. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Make no mistake, I will defeat you. Prepare to go down, Mr. Phoenix Rope. I will go down for you every day of the week. Shot. Yeah, uh, there we go. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, go down for her every day of the week. Yeah. No problem. Mm. Prostitute of Von Karma, your opening statement, please, and stop quipping me. <laughs> Those of Von Karma blood have only one fate. 
and that is perfection. The defendant, Maya Fey, will find no escape from her guilt on my watch. Perhaps even zero escape. V very well. What is the defense's position? Oh, yeah? Oh, yes. You know what we say when we're where I'm from? 999! Nine, nine, nine. I'm gonna smack you on the dick for that. You'll find that I've got a British accent. That is because I'm going to be a main character in this game, and you do not want a full-on German accent like before, because I'd get real tired of it. Do you call that a German accent, what you did before? I call it a movie German accent, what I did before. Oh, okay. I wish that I could slip into Craig Ferguson's German accent. I don't know his German accent. So sometimes, like, when, when he's interviewing somebody and it gets to, like, a heavy topic, mm -hmm. he'll, like, pull out a pipe and start, like, doing, like, a German, like, uh therapist like accent. Freud kind yeah of thing. like exactly like that okay he can just slip right into that shit nice and I always found it great but I could never do it that's funny because he can do a, uh, a lot of accents but on the Drew Carey show he sure couldn't well okay <laughs> he was doing an English accent yeah and he admits it's the worst English accent in the history of because any the Scots hate ever. the British yeah so fair not without reason yeah that's that's true I, I really enjoy uh, off topic again I really enjoy this one interview that Craig did when he was still on, on his show with Ricky Gervais. That's two of my favorite Europeans, right? Yes. And uh, they're kind of throwing barbs back and forth, right? And Ricky's just like, you know that bit at the top of, of Britain uh, that called Scotland? We own that. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a wonderful interview, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, That's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. I like it quite a bit. I don't do a good Ricky voice either. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I I forgive you. The rest of the world doesn't, though. Whatever. Your Honor. Wow. Does the defense wish to enter a plea of not guilty? Yes. Foolish fool who foolishly dreams of foolish dreams. Ten minutes. I give you defense. I give the defense ten minutes before it changes its plea. Yeah, your pops tried the same trick. It didn't work out. That's right. I'll have you running for the justified self-defense plea in no time. Justified self-defense? A plea usually reserved for, a, for when a person unintentionally kills in defense of themselves. We could very easily make a solid case that it was self-defense. But... The defense stands by the plea of not guilty, Your Honor. Because to plead justified self-defense is to say you did kill someone. Oh, How foolish. Oh, I, I quite like that. I do, I do like her quite a bit. Yes, indeed. If that's how you want to play it, Mr. Phoenix Wright, then I shall now call the first witness. In between episodes, I'm going to be looking up cosplay of her. Yes, cosplay. That's what he's going to be looking up. I do. I look up cosplay a lot. If I find a character that I like, I usually look up cosplay of them. Just yes. because there's a lot of like little twists and all that stuff, little variations where people change it. It's good stuff. Just like how uh, Adrosaurus' Emma Sky cosplay was great. I don't know that one. I think I sent it to you, but... You probably did. Yeah. It's good. I don't know. Yes! Yes, you did. I mm -hmm. remember now. Yes. Okay, yes, that was good. But also because the cosplayers put a lot more effort into it, and they'll like pull up the frames and all that stuff and be like, yeah, here's from the art book that I didn't know existed. And like, here's where he shows the back of them and you can see like, they got this extra ribbon and shit. Yeah, when they do all that kind of shit, I'm like, oh, I'm impressed. Yeah, I really like it when they do the full breakdown of the cosplay and I, I just enjoy that. It's, it's, I really like it. Anyways, she's just as scary as her father. Like father, like daughter, I suppose. I don't know how I got here, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Witness, your name and occupation? Yes, sir. My name is Dick Gumshoe. I'm a detective at the local precinct. Ah! <laughs> Get to the point already. That was straight to the point. Explain the to fuck? the court the details of the murder. You bitch. I like her. I really like that, pal. <laughs> uh, if everyone would please look at this map. <laughs> The channeling chamber. The channeling chamber. <laughs> has no windows and the door was locked shut. Thanks, girl training. <laughs> she just keeps showing up, man. I don't know why Maya keeps channeling her spirit. <laughs> At the time of the murder, only the victim and the defendant were in the room. What were they doing in there? 
Um, they, well, they were channeling a spirit, so... It's called the channeling chamber. They, they were channeling. They were watching TV. Yeah. Ch channeling a spirit? That's quite the look of disbelief there, your honor. <clears throat> anyway, a few minutes after the channeling started, gunshots were heard coming from inside the room, sir. A few of the witnesses broke the door down and rushed into the room. Ah, and that's when they found that the victim was already dead, correct? Hmm, I believe this is one of the most up and shut cases I've ever presided over. Every time you say that, we prove you wrong. Yeah, you he, just shut the fuck up. We, I assume he sees a lot of other cases outside of Phoenix's cases. Literally not a single one. No, he's just reserved for Phoenix. Yeah. Because the the... Who 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 puts the judges in the places? Who's the judge's boss? Uh, usually they're elected. Or there's like a... It depends on which kind of judge it is, really. Hmm. So not like the mayor or the governor or whatever? Not usually. Or is this a federal court? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of judges in different positions. Like, you can have a state judge that presides over matters of the state. And then you can have, like, your little county judge, which is pretty much just there. And they can all get hired on by different processes. Hmm. There are some areas where there's... It's like a volunteer position. Because there's not enough people there and there's not, like, an actual lawyer. Right. <laughs> so some places you don't even have to be, like, a law student to be a judge. It's not great. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. It gets complicated. Judges are weird, and I don't like them. Yeah, fuck judges. Hashtag. Yeah, fuck judges, unless you're listening to me in court, in which case, I love you, I will buy you candy. <laughs> yes, and I'll, I'll bring you some pizza. Yeah, I, I will bribe every judge with pizza. Okay, maybe let's not say that. <laughs> every judge with pizza. All right, fine. Yeah, I... I uh, what the the opinions of Bobby do not reflect the opinions of Cactus Core or management as a whole. <laughs> I will give an entirely unrelated and anonymous gift of pizza to every yes, judge. <laughs> I agree. No, I don't. <laughs> Bobby agrees. <laughs> Anyways, we got the floor plans. Man, we have been a wreck this so, episode. So, how was the victim killed? <laughs> I was about to get to that pilgrim. Stop wasting my time, then. Cause of death. The direct cause of death was a pistol shot to the forehead, sir. The shot was fired from point-blank range. Was it? But before the victim was shot, sir, he was stabbed in the chest. Odd to stab someone and then shoot them. The wound was very severe, but not enough to cause instantaneous death. The murderer also used the pistol for to The murderer used the pistol to finish the victim off after the stabbing. Why would there have been two shots also if it was from point blank range to the forehead? Always double tap. Pilgrim. Yeah, I mean, I know that and you know that, but does your everyday nurse know that? After stabbing a dude? Probably. I mean, sort of like this She uh, probably has seen enough people survive gunshot wounds to know, "Hey, I should double tap my person." Yeah, but this is sort of like that uh, that opening of Dark Knight with Bane thing, you know. Oh, maybe he's one. Yeah, there we go. Hold on. Maybe he's wondering why you would see to shoot a man before tossing him out of a plane. Yes, of course. That whole thing, like, what you're doing is nonsensical to the to the scenario. Right. So it's just like uh, fucking Hitler, right? Because he bit into the cyanide pill and shot himself, and was in a burning building. See, now that one's a bit more understandable. One, because they were going to get to him before the building burned. And two, hydrogen cyanide pills can not work in time. Which is interesting. Right. That they are very fickle. Like, they'll work 95% of the time and will kill your ass dead in like 10 minutes. Right. But, uh, you got that 5% of the time, then they just fuck you up and it hurts. Right. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> use a use a guillotine. That's true. There's no coming back from a properly sharpened guillotine. Or even a non-properly sharpened guillotine. You just become a you know the ghost of Gryffindor Tower. That's true. That wasn't a guillotine though. That was. It a, was just an axe. Like yeah, a, a blunt axe. If I would have been there, 
If I was been there, it wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> <laughs> no blunt axes in my vicinity, good sir. No. <laughs> Just blunts. No. Well, Pearl's gonna hook you up. Oh, okay. Well, as so long as Pearl hooks me up, you know. It's part of Pearl lore now. I don't okay. do drugs unless they're given to me by an underage child. Then it's fine. It's kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're going to call it there before we continue that line of thought. <laughs> Jesus it's, Christ. What a train wreck of oh, an episode. Oh, my God. Hi, Garrison. Welcome back. Good to see you again. Sorry for this. Uh... <laughs> Anyway, it's confirmed Pearl lore that she's a drug dealer, so... Yeah. We're just gonna go with that we're gonna, we're gonna keep making underage drug dealer jokes, because I guess we wrote because ourselves into that Because it's hilarious, car. and I've seen Breaking <laughs> Bad, so... She's gonna get on a bike. Fair That's enough. how she got here. She was on the bike. Oh, yeah? So she could do it. Sure. Why not? Anyways, off to the shoutouts. Yeah, we accomplished so much this episode, We you guys. didn't do shit, and we're not going to do shit next episode. Anyways, my shout-out <laughs> is going to go towards an actor and singer by the name of Scott Grimes, who I know him from a lot more stuff than I thought I knew him from. Uh, mainly, I know him as the voice of Stephen Smith from American Dad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? But also, that uh, back... Man, this must have been like 13, 14 years ago. I'm not entirely sure. The song Sunset Boulevard? That's also him. I don't know that song. If you look it up, I'm sure you have heard it. Okay. Because he always talks about it, because he assumes that the Sunset Boulevard in Rockin' California is the one from the songs. It has to be. There's only one Sunset Boulevard in all of California, and we go on it uh, to get to work. Yeah. So Clearly. Yeah. That it, it has to be the one. But he's also been in a whole bunch of other stuff. And I didn't realize he was also in the show The Orville. And I fucking love that show. I'm not surprised show. at that. I fucking love that show. And I love him in that show. I think he's probably the best part of that show. So, yeah. I, I haven't watched it, actually. It's worth it. Definitely, definitely worth it. It was on Hulu. I'm fairly certain it was Hulu. Okay. So, yeah. I'm not sure if it's still on there, but it was. Definitely worth watching. So, yeah. I want to do a shout-out to Scott Grimes. Turns out I like a lot of his work. Never even knew. Uh, as for me, I'm going to do a shout out to a game that just came out on console called Arcade Spirits. Yeah. Now, this actually came out originally on Steam in like March 2019, but it just came out for Xbox, PS4, and Switch uh, this last Friday. Um, and thank you to our viewer Garrison for turning me onto the game in the first place. And he... just for turning us on in general. Oh, yes, of course. Um, yeah, so uh, that's. It, it, it's kind of a vi- it is a visual novel not quite a bar PG like, like Valhalla or Coffee Talk but in the same kind of vein um, basically you work for this arcade and you have to make different choices and uh, get along with different people you've got these d- five different kinds of personality choices that you can have like this first time I'm, I'm romancing a girl named Naomi who's voiced by Stephanie Shea who does the voice of Tharja in Fire Emblem Awakening which is funny um, nice as well as a uh, I, a supposedly best girl from Naruto Hinata. I don't actually know who that is, but that's who Roddick says is best girl. Garrison disagrees. He says the best girl in Naruto is Ramen Shop Daughter. Yes. Uh, okay. So I know why Roddick says that uh, Hinata is the number one best I, girl. I'm completely out of this conversation because I am not a Naruto person. I watched one episode when it was new Naruto, um, and that was it. And if if you watch the main story and you're just talking about like the main active, like, ninja-like characters, then I suppose Roddick would be right. Okay. But if you take all of them as a whole, Garrison is by far the most correct person. Leagues above the next best girl. I see. Yes, so I'm gonna have to agree with Garrison on this one, but with, like, a little asterisk next to it. Uh, also, Roddick, he's been, he hates Naruto, but he keeps reading the manga for some reason. And he hates Sakura, and he nicknamed her Sakurva, which, you know, K-U-R-W-A, which is like the Polish word for bitch. Oh, I didn't know that. That's clever. It's, that I, I think it's hilarious. Yes. The second he said that, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Good shit. Uh, um, I think I'm one of the only people that likes Sakura. I don't think she's an entirely worthless character. I don't think she's the best character. I think she's fine. She serves a purpose. Give me a Naruto Kai. I'll watch it. I'm not going to watch 700 episodes of this fucking show. That's fair. 
Anyway, gone kind of afoul of my shout out arcade spirits. So uh, basically, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Stephanie Shea, she she's the voice of Naomi in the game, who's kind of the the arcade repair technician person. Um, and then I'm also doing like the compassionate um, personality type this time around. Um, I enjoy it. it. It's the writing is hilarious, and I've been uh, almost live tweeting it. I don't want to give away everything, so I haven't been doing everything. But when I see something that's particularly funny or I've got something to, to comment on, I put it on the on the Tweety box. Um, and the writer of the game keeps liking our tweets and responding to certain things that I would say. Um, and also, when I find a glitch, I tweet that too, and they're like, "Okay, thank you, I'm I'm on it," um, which is fun. Nice. Um, but it's a great game. It's 20 bucks, I think. I actually got it for 15 because it was on a pre-order discount on Xbox. Um, but yeah, I would definitely pick it up uh, if you're if you're even remotely related, uh, interested in visual novels. Which, if you're watching Phoenix Wright, you should be. So, yes, yes. Play Arcade Spirits. It's good, and it's a small little indie game, and I would really like for it to do well. So please, uh, please pick it up. But I, uh, I think that's it. Uh, over a forty-minute episode with all about eight minutes of gameplay. Exactly. I, I, <laughs> oh god. Well, we finally saw Francisca. Yeah. So it's good. That is a thing that happened. We're finally in court. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>